All right, uh, welcome everybody to the one-stop marketing shop, Gutenberg's Marketing Toolbox. And if you think I changed that title to fit Gutenberg in there, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> um, you can tell I'm having a couple of uh, technical difficulties uh, because I can't get this to load properly, so we're going to have to deal with some of the navigation showing a little bit. Hopefully that's not a problem for anyone. If it is, I don't know, yell at me afterwards, it'll be fine. Um, so we're going to go through all the slides here. We've got uh, the WordCamp organizers who you just met. Uh, this uh, fantastic crew kind of put all this uh, event together. This is my first time attending a WordCamp, so I'm very grateful to everyone here. Uh, very grateful to the organizers as well, uh, especially Robin, uh, who took his time to go through uh, the deck uh, with me and kind of give me some pointers. Uh, your beautiful, wonderful, super amazing sponsors. Um, I'm going to call out bloom host because it's very hard to read so it's this one right here um, yeah that'd be great if we can do that <laughs> oh that's awesome. there you go so and uh <laughs> ah. oh fancy all right so welcome to WordCamp Toronto um, and my title slide, so so fancy. Um, so I wanted to, oh, this is going to load very slowly. It's very exciting. So what do I hope that you're going to get from this presentation? Because I know that the title slide or the title is not especially uh, clear. Um, I was going to do these in fancy kind of rollout bullet points, but this will work. So one of the things I want you to walk away from this, if you forget anything else, is an understanding of the growth stages of, of a business as they relate to the four critical digital marketing channels. Um, and obviously, um, I want you to have some confidence in WordPress's support for your business from small to medium to large. Um, there should be no reason why you have to get pushed out of WordPress unless you're in some super fancy edge case. And the last piece is how you can leverage Gutenberg to better support your, your marketing efforts. Who am I? I'm very sick, if you hadn't noticed. Um, so if you want to shake my hand, we maybe should just do one of these. Uh, that'll be OK. But my name is Troy Fox. I'm the founder of a digital marketing agency called Delta Growth. I've been in the space for almost 10 years, doing mostly search engine optimization and conversion rate optimization. But my team right now does a lot more than that. And so we're talking about all the elements of that and the strategy involved in engaging uh, different sizes of businesses. I love warm countries, rock climbing, scuba diving, and WordPress. Um, who are we? So Delta Growth is the company that I represent. I'm the founder or one of the co-founders of the company. Uh, we're a digital marketing agency based out of Toronto. Uh, right now we're uh, hiring our eighth employee. We're actually hiring currently as well. So if you know anyone who's a, as intermediate uh, to senior SEO specialist, send them our way. We have a six hour work day and three days work from home. Everyone seems to like that. I'm not entirely sure why. I want to talk a little bit about some of the brands that we work with, uh, just to establish a little bit of trust here. If you've heard of Carfax or Carproof, we work with them. Well.ca, Maple, and you're going to hear a lot about Maple today. We work with a company called Easygrass, which is an international organization, Bargains Group, uh, Excel Homes, and US Stove and more. So the, the start of this presentation is on just kind of growing the business online. What are the major components of, of growing a business? The first is search engine optimization. And this is obviously just the digital marketing channels. So the first is search engine optimization. And when you build your business online, when you, when you start putting your website together, frequently the first thing you're going to be thinking about is SEO. I'm not going to get into all the granular pieces. I'm not going to give you your top five tips for SEO. I think Ryan at the back may be doing. We do, I haven't seen your presentation. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so you can get that somewhere else. What we're going to be doing is we're going to figure out how we can integrate the, or the, the different strategies into your business. And you can kind of get a sense as a business owner, as a marketer, as a developer, de designer, supporting a business owner or a business, how you can kind of uh, enable them to get to this. So. Critical uh, digital marketing channel number one is SEO. It's the long-term channel. It's the one where you have the highest return on investment over time. It's the one where if you didn't invest in it 10 years ago, your business is going to be very expensive today. Paid advertising. So I group a lot of channels together under paid advertising, and I do it because they all serve the same business purpose. So if you look at Facebook advertising, Google advertising, Instagram, Snapchat, a lot of these channels, they all fit under paid advertising because what you can do is you can pay money 
to get users and sales. And this is a very fast turnaround time. So I can immediately, for you right now, enable a campaign, spend a bunch of your money, and get you some sales. The question is, is it as efficient as it could be? Is it as well targeted as it could be? Is it driving the right sales? But all of those things fall into the same bucket, which is paid advertising. It's one of your critical channels. Another one is email and marketing automation. And a lot of business owners, um, some business owners, about 50% of them will actually think about email and digital or, and uh, marketing automation. And then 50% just will have never thought of it. It just won't have ever crossed their mind. There's some, something about it that just kind of turns you off. But it's this idea of reaching out and engaging your customers after the purchase process or during the nurture process before they become an actual uh, client. And even beyond that, being able to talk to your user at different stages in the funnel and their, in their customer journey, all the way down to things like um, you know, sharing your business. They wanna, they wanna say, hey, I had this great experience working with you. How do I share your company? How do I share your business with my friends? And email and marketing automation will help you do that. Conversion rate optimization is the last piece. I sometimes use this interchangeably with user experience, and um, it kind of bothers me sometimes that user experience and CRO don't go hand in hand in some people's minds, so I'm using them perfectly interchangeably just to annoy those people. Um, but the idea is that conversion rate optimization has a goal of improving the number of people on your site who actually convert into a paying customer or a lead or somebody who donates to your charity, whatever your goal happens to be. It's improving that conversion rate. And user experience is enabling a user to get to their desired goal. So if you're saying, you know, I'm, I'm someone on this site and I want to pay you for your services, well, let's make it as easy as possible for them to do that. Let's give them all the information they need to do to make that decision. And hey, that's what conversion rate optimization is. Give them what they need, take away blockers. So those are your four channels, and we're going to be kind of covering those for this whole process. But this is, this is by far the most theoretical presentation I've ever given. Um, I, I teach a three month, or I used to teach a three month SEO course where it was just granular. Most of my presentations are very specific to changes you can make to your business today. This one's gonna be a little bit more theoretical and I, that was driving me nuts so I said, no, we're gonna do a case study. So this is a client of ours, they're called Maple. They're an online doctor. They're competing, or they're disrupting, I should say, the walk-in clinic space. So this is gonna sound like a sales pitch. It's not, but it could be, I guess. Um, if you have kids and you've had the experience of taking off work to you know, take them to a walk-in clinic and you sit there for four hours, and then you see a doctor and they prescribe you exactly what you knew they were going to prescribe the kid because they've had the stupid thing like four times, well, Maple kind of gets around that. So you have a little mobile app, you punch in the symptoms, a doctor, an actual medical doctor gets on the line with you, says, okay, yeah, that's clearly a whatever, and then they create a prescription for you, you can go pick that up at your pharmacy, whole experience may take 30 minutes. Um, so they're a fantastic solution, and uh, they're gonna be our case study today because we started with them as a new business, and we helped them grow into what I would like to call a medium-sized business. We'll get to that. So. Um, we're going to kind of cover this in two different parts. So we're going to cover every single critical digital marketing channel for Maple when they were a small business, and then we're going to cover them all as uh, Maple as a medium-sized business. But then I'm going to show you the big picture so that you can take that home and say, this is what I should be doing for my business or what the high watermark is for my business. And if I'm not even close to there, something's wrong. If we haven't started that, something's wrong. Essentially, these should be questions you ask yourself, am I in the right place? So for paid advertising for Maple, when they were a small business, they only had a couple of things that they were working on. They only worked with Google ads and Facebook ads. And for a lot of small businesses, we actually don't recommend having two marketing channels. We recommend only one, or paid advertising channels, I should say. And the reason for this is because depending on what you can spend per user, you don't have enough data to make any kind of decisions. Because your decision-making process for paid advertising should be, do I feel confident spending more? And if your answer is yes, then you have all the metrics you need generally, you know how much you're costing, you're, you're paying for uh, a user, you know how much you're, you're getting for uh, a conversion, you know that that's profitable, and so you're confident paying more. And for a lot of businesses, especially B2B organizations or anyone with like a lead value or a sale value over $1,000, you're probably gonna wanna stick to just one marketing channel. 
Um, so Facebook or Maple had two. This is because they're a B2C company. Their cost per acquisition is, and I can say this because it's not super crazy, below $30. Um, and that's, that's pretty clear because their price for their product is something like $50. So they can't pay anything more than that. But that means that they can quickly get results and see results by channel. So they're focused on a couple of marketing channels. We drove traffic directly to the homepage. So this may drive some specialist nuts to hear this. Um, I don't recommend creating a ton of internal landing pages all the time it, as a small business, as a new business. It's, it's valuable to kind of take as, an, as a next step um, after you've kind of started to see some results, um, but your homepage should be a very good experience for the user. There can be a much better, a much more targeted experience for the user, but hey, you're a small business. Your marketing budget is not very large. I think the objective uh, marketing budget is something like 10% of your gross revenue, somewhere between 5%, five and 10% of your gross revenue. So how much money do you really have to spend on all sorts of new pages, new things like that? So Maple right now, uh, they well, uh, when they started out, they just had the one or the one page. And then with the paid advertising, we only focused on three or four major ideas. So we didn't say, what are the 10 million campaigns that we could run for Maple? Because there are a lot. Uh, we were running campaigns against uh, online doctor, virtual healthcare. Uh, we were running campaigns against walking clinics, and we were wa running campaigns against. Oh, that's interesting. We were running campaigns against conditions. So um, this is one of those weird things as a marketer where you're actually happy to be working with things like ED and UTIs and stuff like that. Um, we actually, that gets thrown around the office a whole lot. It's just like, yeah, how's the UTI campaign going? Um, so their, their paid advertising campaign is very simple. And now we're talking about search engine optimization. So what were they doing? I'm going to be very honest with you, almost nothing. And we didn't actually push this a whole lot because the paid advertising channel was fairly strong. And SEO is a very long-term game. But some of the parts of this long-term game are something that you should be focusing on as a new business. So we're gonna get to that. And Delta Growth does this as well. If you're a specialist, if you're an SEO specialist and you're sitting in the room going, you're wrong, you can look at uh, the Delta Growth site and you can see that we're actually following these rules as well um, because we're, we're only about two years old. So. Maple started out with just a home and conditions page, and, or, and conditions pages, I should say. So they had their home page, which targeted things like, uh, you can see here, online doctors, virtual health, and prescriptions in Canada. Those are the types of things that people would search for whenever they were looking for Maple. So their home page ranked fairly well for that, surprisingly. And then their inner pages, so the only inner pages they had were just conditions. So UTI diagnosis, prescriptions, uh, treatment, same thing with like ED, same thing with like colds or coughs. Um, they have a ton of conditions they treat, so we've got a ton of pages for it. But that was about it. They had less than 30 pages. So that was fine. That's actually a pretty straightforward website. If you're a designer developer um, in WordPress, you're going, yeah, okay, I've gotten website scopes like that from small businesses all the time. Totally fine. Um, the last piece that's probably more important is this investment in media and partners. So the hardest thing to do from a search perspective is to create authority over time, to grow your authority over time. And what this is, and if, you're, if you've heard about SEO, you've probably heard about link building. This is kind of that, except in, in 2018, or I guess 2019, geez, this is coming up. Um, so this is kind of the modern equivalent of this. How do you create authority for your website? And is it a quick thing to do? Not really. A good way to do it is to go say, speak at conferences, which is what I'm doing. Um, or you can host meetups, or you can work with partners very closely, or you can work with charitable organizations that want to give back. Um, you can do all sorts of things to create authority just by working with, your, with the media, say, with your partners. However it is you can do that, any kind of small business should be looking at doing that to some extent. Not to the extent of hiring like a PR agency or something like that, but kind of just doing what I call founder stuff. Can I swear? Probably not. Founder stuff. Um, and that just involves, you know, actually going out and talking about your business, right? Trying to put your business out there. Um, and we did it all in WordPress. This is, should be a no brainer. It's a small business. It's a free platform. It solved every problem. Why would we not? Conversion rate optimization. So, for a small business, I think a lot of people consider conversion rate optimization to be A-B testing. If you've heard that, if you've heard CRO, you've heard A-B testing, you think they're the same thing. It's not really. The idea behind CRO is removing blockers and 
making it easier, enabling users to get to their, their desired outcome. So you don't actually have to A-B test. With Maple, they were redesigning their website when we engaged with them, and we got to work very closely with their design company, which I believe was called Humanistic. Man, if I'm wrong, they're going to be mad at me. I almost referred a bunch of business to you guys, so they mispronounce your name. Um, so when they were working on the new site, it's so small, I'm sorry about that, but um, we got the chance to talk to the design company, and we said, well, what do people need to see to feel confident and comfortable giving their information and, and working with essentially online doctors. Like, I'm gonna give you a bunch of information online that's medical and, and scary and you know all these kinds of things. And it's not, it's disruptive. A lot of these people, we've captured them in this walking clinic kind of space. And they were just gonna go, like they're all bundled up. They've got their three kids just bundled up and they're putting them in the minivan and they're going, wait, what's this maple thing that I found while searching for the closest walk-in clinic? And so we need a way to capture them right, uh, really quickly. And so one of the things we did was we said, let's make it really obvious what we do. So instead of chat with a doctor on your lunch break, which I don't know, what does that mean? Are they going to give you advice? Are they just really friendly doctors that are really sad? Is this like live with sad doctors so that they're happy? No. So, okay, we're online doctors. We provide virtual health care and prescriptions in Canada. That's awesome, right? How does the app work? Well, this is actually how the app works. It's a GIF of how the app actually works, um, how you go through the whole process of engaging with a doctor and what the outcomes look like. You could actually just sit on the homepage and look at it for a couple of seconds and be like, I actually know what this does, which is great. And then uh, we actually did a couple of fancy things with their conversion form. So. Um, this is something that we could do without an audit. I just said, you know what, like your little register button is not super useful because I don't know what I'm registering for. I'm, like I'm registering to chat with a doctor. I, I, I'm not entirely sure what that is. So we said, okay, let's just get started. And we kind of switched, we looked at both of those and we drove traffic to both of those. We actually did use Google Optimize for that. But we set up a, an experiment in 15 minutes to add this email address field and the get started now field. And then when they type in the email address in the registration form, it just pre-populates the email address. So you go, ah, crap, I've already started this. I might as well pay these guys $50, right? <laughs> That's how that works <clears throat> in data. Um, so we focused on a strong brand identity with Maple. We focused on educating the customer. And we focused on the unique selling point that Maple offers. And we tried to make sure that the entire site reflected that. I'm so happy everything is loading. The internet is so horrible. Um, so email and marketing automation. This is one of those big scary things for small businesses, like I was saying. We'll get to how big and scary it should be. Um, what Maple was doing was capturing emails on registration. So whenever they actually did sign up, uh, Maple would take their email address and pull it into their database. They would have uh, an onboarding drip campaign. So whenever, once you signed up, they send you an email uh, right away giving you a full walkthrough of how to use the platform, any kind of frequent concerns that people have had, uh, answers to that, any kind of links to resources that are very valuable to someone who just needs to use the app right now. Because there is a walkthrough in, in the mobile app and on the desktop app, but a lot of people skip that stuff, so let's, let's kind of give it to them a couple of ways. But then they also had another email that would go out two or three days later that would start talking about things that you may not have known about the app because you were in an emergency. You had you know, one of these conditions and you just wanted to get a resolution for this right away. But did you know you can see a therapist on Maple? Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, did you know that you can treat this? Did you know that there is actual, actually an annual plan where you can register your entire family for a flat rate and you never have to think about paying or anything, you just give them the stupid phone, you go tell the doctor you got a runny nose and get something for it, right? And your kid can do it. Um, so for this, they did no research, they had no metrics they were really looking at, they did no A-B testing, they just said, I think this might be a good idea. And it was, I think it was a good idea. Okay, that's Maple, but what about you? Do you have to do all that? Mm, I don't know, I don't think so. So. Um, this, this is all available. It is almost impossible to see. So this is all available um, in the slides, and I'll give you a link to the slides. I'll give you a link to um, this kind of document, and it goes all the way from small business to uh, large size uh, businesses, not quite enterprise. Um, so you'll be able to see this, but 
For SEO, you should put a bit of effort into SEO whenever you start your business. You should start thinking about, well, do I have a homepage? And then what are three or four other types of pages I should have? And those pages just speak to user intents. And I love the word user intent. Now, I don't use the word keyword a whole lot. So if, if I'm an SEO specialist that, that doesn't say keyword and that makes you not trust me, I fully understand, but you're wrong. Uh, so user intents are great. Because you can think about a user intent as, for example, searching for your specific product. Or um, you know, if you develop, for example, let's say you're a web developer, web design developer, and you say, yeah, I do web development. That's great, but everyone, every web developer does web development. So do you also do WordPress development? Do you do Joomla development? Do you do Drupal development? Um, so OK, if you do, make a page for it and talk about how you're better than everyone else at doing that. Right? So as a small business, just take a couple of minutes, think about the four or five things that you could do for that. Yeah, that's an expectation. That is a, that is a high watermark for, uh, for a small business. If you don't do that, you're not doing it right. Um, you're at least you're behind in SEO. There's a couple of other things I didn't really talk about here, but one of them is this idea of an indexable website. This is one of those, um, have you heard of FUD, fear, and, fear, uncertainty, and doubt? I hate this, this is like a sales technique, so I'm not gonna do it, but there are problems with websites that can occur because you didn't think about SEO. So have, your, have like someone you know who's thought about SEO or read some articles on SEO, at least take a look at your website. Um, do some due diligence, right? If let's say you're gonna start a business, um, you, need to, you need to look at how plausible this, this business is because you're investing your money in it, right? So same thing with SEO. At least do your due, due diligence. One requirement is you know that your website is in Google. <laughs> because there are ways that you can kick it out of Google. So Google yourself, right? And, and if it's not, something's wrong, call an expert. Um, but that is, a, that is definitely a requirement. You would be surprised how frequently that happens. Uh, capture and build authority and leverage business relationships. So this is another thing that it's like a 50 50. I don't know how this happens, but I think what happens is you get a lot of business owners who are specialists in a certain space. So um, I'm a specialist developer. I'm a specialist designer. I'm a specialist speaker. I'm a specialist, whatever it is. And then you create a business, but um, you don't really have like a business kind of mentality or relationship building mentality. Um, I would like to encourage you to build that, especially with regards to leveraging business relationships and trying to get other people to work with you and to work with other people. Try to provide value to other organizations, try to provide value to the community through meetups, through things like that. And naturally, organically, what will happen is these people will link to your website. And then you have these very high value associations that are now linking to you, right? Um, we work with Action Against Hunger for pro bono because I think it's a really great initiative. Um, we work with Operation Groundswell because they're a really great initiative. Um, and working with kind of charitable organizations like that, yeah, it gets you a lot of authority because they love you and they want to do something for you. And putting a link on their website's free, right? They don't have to pay for that. It's great. Paid advertising. What do you have to do to be successful as a small business owner there? Start it. <laughs> you got to try it. But you also have to know what you're trying. So I would stick to Google or Facebook. I can't give you the full rundown of what paid advertising is, but a really quick summary, you need to know what your cost per acquisition is, what the maximum you can pay per acquisition. So uh, easy example of this is if you sell shoes, if it's a $20 pair of shoes and your profit margin on that is like 50%, which would be nice, I guess, then you can pay less than $10 to make a sale. So you need all the metrics required. You need someone to give them to you or you need to get them yourself to show that this is a profitable campaign. That's something you need to think about. And uh, just do it in Google, do it in uh, Facebook ads, and start remarketing. Remarketing is always going to be profitable. I've never seen a remarketing campaign not be profitable. The problem is, uh, and I'm actually I'll walk you through what that is. Uh, so remarketing is, let's say you land on my website, I follow you around with ads. I go, hey, I know you were on my website 30 minutes ago. How is that? <clears throat> oh no. Um, so that's kind of what remarketing is, but uh, we do it a little bit nicer than that. We, tr we try not to be kind of super sleazy. I think it'd be funny, I think, for certain brands just to be like, oh, but we try not to. So most people, at least it's someone who's been on your site, they have some kind of interest in your brand, they've got some interest in your product, they're much more likely to convert than other people. So you can actually spend uh, a little bit more on those people and get a good return on investment. 
email and, and automation. I actually have this little 0% effort thing here. Just capture their emails. It's not that hard to capture someone's email address. So if they're signing up, if they're making a purchase, if they're doing something like that, try to capture their email. I know there are certain industries where this doesn't work. I'm, this is for every single business in the world, so you know it's a little bit hard, right? But capture their emails because when you become a mid-sized business, you don't want to start from zero. You don't want to start from, oh, let's try this brand new channel because you're going to get frustrated and move on. No, just capture the emails. And then if you get bored someday, you go, I wonder if I could write an email, right? I bet you I could. And then you write an email and make a bunch of money and you go, oh, God, this is great, right? And then you get motivated in, in doing it. So capture the emails on a rainy day. If you're a business owner, if you're uh, in charge of marketing, you're going to just get bored and write an email at some point. Um, most of your effort should be focused on this user experience and CRO thing. So I love digital marketing. I think it gets a, a weird rep as this uh, make money online. Uh, we're going to be, we're going to save your lives. We're going to do super cool stuff. It is a magic pill. It is not a magic pill. It takes a lot of work. And one of the things that screws us trying to do digital marketing is having really crappy user experience. So if we direct people to your website, and you have a really bad visual identity, um, it's almost impossible to know kind of who you are, then, well, we're not going to be able to make you any money. It's just not going to work because nobody likes you. Nobody trusts you. So think about your, your visual identity, and I can't talk too much about that. I think there's a lot of design sessions today. Some of them are actually talking about that. I would go to that if you feel like that might be a weak point. Um, make sure your home and service pages are, you know those two or three pages I said you should have? Um, your home page and those service pages, run through them. Make your friends run through them. Make someone who hates you run through them. Because you're going to say, I want you, like let's say I sell the phones. I want you to buy a phone on my website. And then sit over them and ask them to talk about what they're feeling and experiences they're experiencing as they're going through. Oh, this is recorded. I can't tell this story. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Let's say you're going through, oh, I can just remove the brand, there you go. Um, let's say you're going through the purchasing of a, of a handset. And uh, the first question I ask you is, what's your SIN number? Are you going to actually buy a handset from me? No, that would be ridiculous. And this is a major telco that did this, just, just you know. Um, and if they had their, their best friend or anyone look at this, they'd be like, no, don't put that there, that's stupid. That's ridiculous. Why would you ever ask for my SIN number, right? Um, so think about that. And this is user testing. So you can either get someone to do that uh, just kind of casually, or you can get someone to run through the site. There's, uh, there are services that do this. There's uh, usertesting.com. There's Try My UI. There's probably a bunch more. I don't, I'm not affiliated with any of them. I don't really care. They have something like $30, $40 per session. So you run someone through this, you give them a bunch of objectives, you ask them a bunch of questions, and it's a real person running through the site, uh, running with some certain demographics, etc. And they'll answer some questions for you. And then just think about what you can do on a regular basis. If you're a business owner, marketing manager, if you're a developer designer who's in charge of, of the website, what are some little things that you could do to make the site a little bit easier for the user? Little blockers that you can remove. Because sometimes they're just really silly little things. You know, it's really cl hard to close this modal. Um, okay, make it easy to close the modal. <laughs> What's wrong with that? That shouldn't take someone making a recommendation to you. You should just run through it and be like, this is annoying, and then give it to a developer and let them fix it. Like, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, so, if you just do this from a digital marketing perspective as a small business or a new business, you should be okay. That's what, what I expect from you. Um, what's very likely true is one or two of these channels you haven't done. And I don't hold that against you. This is um, kind of an idea of saying, what is holistic marketing? Oh, I just said that. That's bad. Um, this is an idea of like taking all of your channels and balancing them out. Because this is where you should be in each channel to be getting your optimum return. All of our images are just going to, that's fine. Medium or growth size businesses. So um, I'm going to run you through what Maple looks like as a medium or growth size business. The only thing with, with this category is, it's really hard to define. I'm going to just say any business that's under $5 million, maybe any business under $10 million is going to be a small business, and then anything over that can be midsize. So paid advertising. Um, what should we be doing differently with paid advertising? 
Maple, when they become a, uh, became a mid-sized company, they started prioritizing measurement a lot more. So one of the questions that we asked them <coughs> was, do you know which channels created awareness for Maple? Because we know which channels are converting. We do what's called last touch attribution, which is the last channel you came in through the website uh, at before you converted. But you'll find that over time that skews very strongly towards organic search because what'll happen is you start creating a lot of awareness in another channel, somebody who's never heard of your brand before, and then they search for the name, Maple, and they come in through the website and they convert. Well, that's gonna be called organic search and the attribution is gonna be towards organic search, but what if they saw the ad somewhere else? That ad should get some kind of attribution. So one of the things we did with Maple was we started looking at first touch attribution. And we did a really fancy solution for that, but now we can record uh, a user based on what original channel brought them in and like who just showed them Maple and then which channel they actually converted through. So now we have a more of a whole picture for what's going on with that. Um, we also increase spend. And this is something that you should pretty much always be doing. Like I said at the beginning, if you're thinking about paid advertising, the question you should always be asking yourself is, do I feel confident spending more? in this channel because if you don't then you don't have the right metrics in front of you or you don't understand the metrics and you need someone to explain them to you right and make you feel confident in them um, or you just need to actually look at all of the numbers am I making more money every time I spend more you know but if you do feel confident spending more why are you not spending more because paid advertising is a direct you know I pay this much I get that much in results right so just keep increasing your spend so mid-sized businesses just do that a lot faster um, Experiment and channels. So now is when you start going out to all the crazy things. Now is when you start saying, okay, I think I'm gonna try uh, Snapchat, I'm gonna try whatever, I'm gonna try Kijiji, I'm gonna try all sorts of things like that. Start uh, experimenting. And the reason we, we started experimenting with Maple was because we got through a lot of the low hanging fruit. There are a lot of campaigns that are very core to what Maple does and we'd already built those campaigns and we already spent a lot of the money in those campaigns. So to make sure that we were staying efficient, we wanted to try LinkedIn. We wanted to try all of these different channels uh, just to see if we could get the low hanging fruit there as well. And then one of the things as a mid-sized business that you absolutely have to do is optimize based on a full life cycle uh, of your user. So you can't just look at, like let's say you're a new e-commerce company and you sell that, that pair of shoes. So okay, the customer comes in, buys a pair of shoes, that's $20. That's the return for whatever investment you made. Um, okay, but what if that customer comes back every week and buys a new pair of shoes because they're just that kind of person? Well, that customer is worth a lot of money, but we're not attributing that to the, the acquisition channel. We're not saying, yeah, lifetime value is very important. And the reason this, this is such a, an important uh, consideration is because if we knew that our customer was worth $10,000, rather than $200, we could pay a lot more to pull them in. And we'd feel a lot more confident pulling them in. And if that's a question for you, if you're like, I actually don't know what that would look like for my customers, that's maybe something that you would start digging into. But again, this is midsize. And Maple is definitely ahead of the game there. So uh, for SEO, excuse the slide, all this stuff is gonna pop in, it's gonna look magic. Um, so for SEO, we started also looking at new user intents. So we wanted to start thinking about new ways we can be in front of users when they're searching for us. Because uh, search engine optimization is a form of inbound marketing, which means we're gonna just be there when someone is looking for us. So one of the things that we're doing is we're disrupting the walk-in clinics. And when someone's searching for like Toronto walk-in clinic or Vancouver walk-in clinic or Mississauga walk-in clinic, we don't have any pages for that and Google doesn't show us for that. That's not how that works. We need to have a page that talks about this before Google will even put us out there. So we started building uh, geo-specific pages, so seeing a doctor in Toronto. Um, and we talk about how we're, we're disrupting the walk-in clinic space and why we might actually solve your problem better than going out to a walk-in clinic. I'm sure every walk-in clinic hates this. I don't care. This is amazing. Um, and you can, you can get that. And then we're gonna go over a couple of examples with Gutenberg Blocks on how you can do this with your business and different types of things you can do. Um, so I'm just gonna skip on. Greater time investment in growing the site. So 
once you've kind of built up this authority, like I was saying, go speak at events, go, go work with partners, that kind of a thing, you now have this authority to leverage. And if you look at the, a successful website from a search engine optimization perspective, it's not a single page. And, and I know this is a, a, a design principle that existed for, for a while, this idea of simplicity and brochure websites and everything. That doesn't help for SEO because you're essentially answering fewer questions. Okay, well, who does that help? It just makes your life a little bit easier because your sitemap is five pages. And you're like, I can remember that. I know where every page is. None of the pages are ugly. That's fine. Um, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that we start growing the site. We start answering more questions. And if you work with an SEO specialist or agency, they'll, they'll direct you in, in uh, the way you can kind of get there. And then you, we also revised the navigation with Maple because uh, their navigation was not big enough to accept, I think, the 200 new pages that we created. So, uh, and one other interesting thing, just because this is WordPress, everything is built on WordPress, the way we did this was we used taxonomies. And I, uh, Delta Growth doesn't do development or anything. Uh, the Maple team is just in love with WordPress, so they've been using it that way. But they used WordPress taxonomies to build out these pages so that they didn't have to individually create every page. They just uploaded a spreadsheet, and it just created all the pages for them. It was amazing. Uh, email and marketing automation. So this is where this gets fun. <laughs> so with Maple, we started considering the full user journey in our communications. And I'm not going to walk you through the whole journey. The slides are available. But uh, what we wanted to do specifically was we'd been focusing on this idea of activation. So when someone signs up, we wanted them to get a consultation. And that's fine because it makes sense. It's a primary business goal. But we weren't really thinking about onboarding or usage over time because what would have benefited us was to look at lifetime value and to say, okay, how can we get someone to come for two consultations with their account instead of going away and forgetting about us? Or three consultations or signing up for a membership. Um, so now we started thinking more about this. Uh, so we created unique paths for different types of users. You know, we, we can tell if a, a user is a family user, not because we're creepy, but because they sign up for a family plan. So it's fine. Um, and then we, we can identify users who are just paying for one consultation, who have an emergency and just needed to get that resolved. And then we have users who uh, have a, a single person subscription because they just want the peace of mind and they hate walking clinics for whatever reason. So we've created unique paths for different uh, users, and our focus was on activation campaigns, so uh, making sure that we can increase the lifetime value of our users. But eventually, we, we did build out some ideas for cross-selling and advocacy, um, but I'll let you take a look in your own time. And then we started getting heavy into conversion rate optimization. So like I said, conversion rate optimization is not just split testing. One of the things that we did was uh, we did a lot of user testing, we ran a lot of users through the website with a bunch of different hypotheses that we wanted to test. Hypotheses, sure, that we wanted to test. And uh, we took a lot of that feedback and we said, what are some changes we can make to make it easier for the user or remove blockers? I make CRO sound so easy. All of you can just go home and do it now. Uh, remove blockers, make it easy, great. Uh, and then we looked at data and analytics. Uh, so one of the cool things with Maple is their funnel is actually very short. It's usually homepage, register, convert, or homepage, how it works, convert. But the conversion form is another thing that we wanted to look at. So we looked at all the different funnels someone could go through in the website. They can start with the conditions page or the home page or the, or the how it works page or wherever it is, and where do they fall out? And why do we think they fell out? What's our hypothesis for why they, they stopped in this journey? Uh, when they're on the actual form, what form field might have stumped them? And interesting note, it's the phone number. Who would have thought, right? So there's all sorts of things that you may not have picked up. And then what we did was we started doing always on optimization. So from our audit, we just came up with a bunch of really cool ideas for testing, and we just started running them. We we're like, yeah, cool, let's just keep doing it. And we did it with WordPress. It was not hard. It's not some fancy HubSpot thing. It's not, you know, whatever, no landing page testing, whatever. It was WordPress and Google Optimize, and it took a couple of minutes to set up, and it's fine. There's no, it doesn't cost anything either. None of these things are, you don't pay for either of them. It's great. So this is, this is kind of our medium-sized growth company. Um, and I'm going to 
skip through this, I think, but this is kind of where your business should be if you're a mid-sized business. Um, this is kind of where you should be aiming to get to. And um, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, be able to get to that really quickly. Mature and large businesses, this is the same thing. So um, this gets really complex for mature and large businesses because they just have so many moving parts and they create new business units and they have uh, all sorts of history and they have uh, stakeholders who are combative and stakeholders who are amazing. And you kind of need to start like focusing on which stakeholder is going to help you the most and which business unit is gonna work. Um, but this is kind of your overall plan for a mature or large business. I did wanna show you a couple of examples of some cool late stage things. So late stage SEO. Um, this is Shopify, and I always use Shopify as an example because they're awesome, they do really cool SEO work. So Shopify's user journey starts with a business owner who's thinking about building an e-commerce website. Well, a business owner who's thinking about building an e-commerce website is also thinking about building a business. And a business owner who's thinking about building a business may be thinking about a slogan, and so for whatever, this is way far back in the user journey, right? Then Shopify is like, sure, whatever, we'll be there, we're out of other things to do. And so they built a slogan generator, um, so I, I searched for WordCamp and it came up with some good ones. If you want to get ahead, get a WordCamp. Um, gee, your WordCamp smells terrific. Uh, WordCamp makes your, your day. Obey your WordCamp. Anyway, so I was going to whip through, I have five minutes? I have five minutes? Yeah? Okay. Um, so let's cover some of the, the Gutenberg benefits. So I'm just focusing on modular thinking in Gutenberg because uh, there wasn't a ton of stuff I could really take from it. Most of it's in the editor and some of it's just in, in use. So um, I wanted to start talking about some of the types of blocks you should be thinking about when you're building a new website and kind of why. So uh, number one, think about features. What are the features that your service provides? Um, you can list those in a block. Why not? It's one of those things that's just valuable to know about your business. A lot of people have questions uh, about Maple, for example. They say, is this condition covered? Well, those would be kind of features and we just have a block for that. We just put that on any page where we think that user intent will be there. Uh, unique selling point or your brand position. Um, this is really important because you're almost always gonna have to do this. Most people don't think about their website or their web pages uh, as being entry points. A lot of people think of their home page as being the entry point and then they spread out and look around from there. Every page on your website can be an entry point. So let's say someone lands on Maple's conditions page uh, and you're, you're looking up whatever condition it is. Well, I need to sell you on my company. Great, you, you handle colds, that's awesome. Why Maple? So, okay, let's answer that. Let's have a block that we can just plug in there that answers that. Social proofing. Uh, super important if you've been in media mentions, if you've spoken at conferences, if you have uh, any kind of partners, big clients that people would recognize, how it works, how your service or how, how your product works, pricing, reviews, calls to action. So that would also be, that'd be your purchase calls to action. It would also be like middle of funnel calls to action just to capture people's email addresses, for example. Also subscribe to my email, never works. Um, Videos and GIFs, so if a video or a GIF can better tell your story, try that, that's a really great module. Um, and this kind of helps you create uh, simple layouts. Okay, this is my favorite part, so let me get through it really quickly. Um, for SEO, when you're, you've got this kind of modular design, you've got all these types of blocks that you've already built, everything is kind of good to go, um, you can start thinking of the different pages that you want to create. And they're a lot easier to create with these blocks because essentially all you need to do is write two or three paragraphs and then put your, like, your USP, brand position, social proofing, call to action. Everything's already done. You just plug it in there, right? So well, what types of pages? If you have any kind of local intent, if you are uh, in the medical space, if you're allied health, if you're, um, if you're in the uh, like service industry, if you're doing anything like that, you probably have location searches. Someone goes Toronto mechanic, right? Um, so build a page for that. Industry and demographic. So people self-identify very frequently. So if you do uh, web development, well, think about web development for enterprises. Is that a different problem to solve? Are there different uh, issues that a stakeholder is going to come up with? Or uh, web development for small business or web development for e-commerce, for example. Um, and demographics. So if you're getting, uh, if you're an insurance company, how many people here are insurance companies? If you're an insurance company, uh, you would insure students, for example. So car insurance for students would be a demographic page. 
problem process? What types of problems lead you to this, uh, this site or this service? Or what kind of process is someone going through where, oh, all of a sudden I need you? Like I'm building a business, I'm launching an e-commerce site, I don't have a host. Okay, well, that's part of the process, so build a page for that. Competitor pages, um, we call these conquesting pages. I'm not sure if that's the actual term, but I think it's awesome sounding. So the idea is you rank for your competitors' names. So Shopify does this. They have this page called Shopify versus Big Commerce, which is a direct competitor of theirs. Um, and so now they rank for Big Commerce reviews, Big Commerce testimonials, Big Commerce alternatives. It's great. It's really smart because they don't they don't say anything. I'm trying not to swear. They don't say anything bad about Big Commerce. They just have reviews views of customers who switch from big commerce to Shopify saying that Shopify is pretty cool and then they have the business the the position of Shopify and the uh, the USP seasonal pages i mean christmas is coming up the holidays are coming up um, so you can always build pages targeting that. That doesn't apply for every industry, though I think it'd be amazing to have an SEO for Christmas um, kind of page, just because it'd be so funny. Uh, landing pages for paid advertising, you can build really quickly, and code-free ABN tests. I'm gonna skip that because I'm out of time. All right, questions. Are we doing questions? Yeah. That's a good question. This is a very good question. Um, so the slides are available at dg.agency forward slash WordCamp 2018. And there's a hyphen in there. Forward slash WordCamp hyphen 2018. The flowchart's available here as well. And if you're interested in talking uh, about Delta Growth, it's here. Any other? Yeah. Um, I have a good rule of thumb for that. So uh, I had a really great mentor who said this whole blue ocean thing is, I can't swear, is bad, <laughs> stupid. Um, because if your competitors are somewhere and all of your competitors are fighting tooth and nail somewhere, it's because there's tons of money there. Right? So if all your competitors are doing paid advertising and you're not performing, it's not because Google Ads is bad. It's because you're bad at doing Google Ads or your campaign, that your first campaign didn't work out. That's fine. Keep trying. The other problem is a lot of people have very high max CPAs, is what I call it. So if you're selling, like uh, the average client that comes over to us is worth upwards of $12,000. Because if they come to us and they get on a retainer, easily $12,000. Okay, what do you think I'm willing to pay for that customer? Decent sum of money. So if I spend $100 on Google Ads and it doesn't work, that's not right, right? You, of course you didn't get a customer for $100 that's worth $12,000, that's crazy. Um, so it's, it's really about, like if you're selling pencils, it's super easy, you know immediately if it's working or if it's not, but just keep trying. Yeah, different campaigns. Yeah, um, we've actually had really bad results with merchant ads, and I've talked to a couple of big e-commerce companies, and the merchant ads aren't, aren't doing quite as well. So they can be effective, but they're just harder to target right now than uh, just search network ads. In the States, that's a different story. Um, merchant ads in the States are doing really, really well. Why are they difficult to target? Pardon? Why are they difficult to target? Um, it's more just sometimes they'll show up for things that you're really not expecting them to. Yeah. <coughs> um, okay, one more, and I think that's it. Yeah. It's out the window, yeah, unfortunately. I think there's a McMaster course on SEO or digital marketing that's trustworthy. I don't have any other recommendations. Yeah. All right, thank you.